All right, guys, welcome back to another live episode of Mental Theater. We have all the Avengers in the house. How are we doing, Avengers? Doing great. Doing great. What's up? What's up, people? What's up? Chilling, man. Chilling, man. You know, just uh, getting ready to knock this out. So our first topic was brought to us by the illustrious JC John Campia talking about how the movie theaters stock jump after the vaccine had a 90% success rate. And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Robbie Sumai. I think that's how you pronounce that. Robbie Sumai writes, Hey, John and Rob. So news came out the other day that Pfizer announced speaking of viagra that <laughs> pfizer announced I that they know. had a <laughs> that they had a potential vaccine that had a 90 percent effective rate and we're talking about a vaccine for the covid 19 uh pandemic obviously that had a 90 percent effective rate on this news stocks in movie theaters instantly shot up i think cinemark stock jumped as much as 40 percent is this the good news that theaters and their investors have been needing Will investors be more? So, Big Mike, as our resident stock expert, <laughs> well, you yeah. saw this spike, this visceral spike here. I mean, uh, you know, the initial, I mean, we'll just keep it in a movie frame, but uh, the initial um, announcement caused the, you know, a lot of, um, I guess, previous stocks to go up right away, including like movie theaters, um, you know, things that, were up before like travel travel stocks uh uh stuff for uh cruises and expedia whatever whatever right and that was just initially the jump but then like that was like monday but then a couple of days later it kind of balanced back out because you know they had made an announcement about a, a vaccine but when is it actually going to be available so and as you see the cases are still going up so then the stock started going back down right away um for the movie theaters though i mean i guess it's a good it's a good thing, you know. Um, I mean, we'll get into other stuff later about other delays and things of that nature, I guess. But um, it's it's a good thing for them, you know. They got so many movies that are in the can right now, and so many movies that they spent so much money to make that they need theaters to come out to make money, right? They can't make enough money streaming wise because they, now, if they knew this, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So if they knew going ahead, they would spend less to make the movies, but. These movies that are already done, Wonder Woman's of the world, you know, your Black Widows. It just the budget was so high that they need a theater. So, you know, it's good news for them, I guess. Absolutely. And Tony Stark Jr., as a person who's also a film fanatic, how did this news make you feel? Um, anything to bring the, the movies back uh, is a big deal for me. I'm actually going to the movies today. Oh, so, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going to see um, what is it called, Mike? Come play. Right. The movie with the little it's a it's a horror movie. So it's like um, it's like it's creepy looking. It's like this kid. It's like technology. This kid is using like his uh, he got a little game on his his uh, laptop or tablet. And when he turned the camera, he could see things. Well, he see this like creature bent like it's like bent over in the corner. He's looking like and then he move it. And it's not. Oh, yeah. 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 I think it, it's come play. yeah. Yeah. So. um. It's called Come Play or Let's Play yeah. or something. I think it's called Let's Play. It's called, it's called Come Play, yeah. No, it's called Come Play, yeah. And the cool thing is it's pretty much a horror movie with kids, though. So kind of like It, where the first half of It, the creature was pretty much attacking kids. Well, it looks like from the trailers is mainly kids it's like going after. And you got the one kid trying to tell the other kids, and the cast seems to be primarily children. It looks pretty good. So it was, again, when I went to the movies, uh, what, two weeks ago? I seen the trailer and I was like, man, this looks pretty good. So we're going to go see it. So you're yeah. Going, to answer uh, the question, Cherry Hill, right? right. You going no, to we're going to, we're today, we're going to go to, um, uh, where is it called? AMC Woodhaven. AMC Woodhaven. Yeah. So not the one connected to Philadelphia mills, but, uh, Woodhaven has its own AMC. Shout out to Sandy cheeks. What up Sandy? Yeah. yeah they said, what's up Sandy? Yeah. When I can't think of something, she's my right hand person to you know fill me in <laughs> so spoiler alert 
<laughs> Ryan, she said hi. To you guys. Ryan Tomatoes gave it a 55%. So it's all good. Listen, I'm a, we'll say 85% of people liked it. So yeah. They like it. Yeah, Ryan Tomatoes done gave probably some of my favorite movies like the worst score. So really? they're coming yeah. out with a podcast, actually. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. They should have been did that. Yeah. Exactly. I'm surprised that they didn't now that you say that. Yeah. I forgot where I saw that, but they're coming out with one if it's not already live. I wonder if they weren't allowed to do it because of the access they have to the film industry. Because, Miguel, you remember this. When you work at the movie theater, you're not allowed to go on any podcasts or have any interviews or talk to the press. So I think it, that, it, could, be, it could be like that. And maybe the pandemic allowed them to be more flexible with that embargo. Mm. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on the uh, stock news, Josh? Um, uh, Pfizer, you know. mm. See, for me, I guess it depends on how the movies can survive until they're administered. Because if they don't survive until then, then, you know, it's really, really doesn't matter type of thing. And I feel like you're still going to need someone like Jeff Bezos <laughs> to bail somebody, to bail the whole industry out. Or something like that. You're gonna need you're gonna need a lot of investment dollars and investment dollars that can sustain, you know, losses for the next what five years, something like that, and be comfortable and not break a sweat in order for it to get back to where it was. Yeah, because even with the pushbacks that we've had with all these movies, I'm just like, you know, if Black Widows push back, let's say for example, until May. But even come May, right? Is people gonna really still be going to the movies at that time enough to prove to make the money that it needs to make? So it's, it's a lot to think about. Right. So you got, you know, those films, you got 007. There's a there's a lot of projects. So and we see, you know, a lot of studios putting more, let's say, emphasis on the streaming content than the actual film content. And we yeah. we've seen Disney do this more so as well. So we'll we'll see if if they'll be willing to take a chance and invest and a huge production because that's that's really how they make their money is on massive productions yeah but you know like no time to die like they um they tried to uh streaming streamers companies tried to buy it but they want 600 million up front just to buy it or whatnot so um like uh the 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 bomb franchise or whatever like that so that's a hard you know it's, yeah. it's a hard to get back you know what i mean so that's a lot of money so yeah what would it cost probably like 200 million to make Something like that probably cost like two, like, but it, remember, they, they already market it twice now, so right. they're probably over like 350 with the marketing at least. So, exactly, bond, you know, usually is at minimum 100 million dollars in marketing, if not 150. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they had, they, had a, they had a Super Bowl commercial like this year, the <laughs> Super Bowl. So, a uh, bond, mm. so yeah, they've already spent a lot of money on the marketing. Yeah, and it kind of sucks for them because they can't really make an announcement on where the franchise is going to go until after the movie drops. So they're just going to be in limbo for a while. Like a bunch of other fr- I, I I'm more, you know, I, I just realized because uh, WandaVision being pushed back to 2021 now, January 15th, just for that announcement. Oh, wow. people. But uh, that means there's literally no Marvel content for an entire year now. That's probably the first year since 2008 or whatnot. So it's like, wow. Uh, a lot. Uh, so we haven't had a, so we haven't had a Marvel anything since Spider Man, which was summer two thousand nineteen. That's a long time. Uh, well, not really. Um, the movie you and I went to see, right? That counts. What was that? Uh, Maisie. The Immortals or the what was it called? The, no, um, it's not a part of the MCU. That was a, that was the a Fox production. What? Well, well, you said Marvel. You didn't say MCU. So. Oh, yeah. okay. I meant like yeah. I, meant, uh, I got you. Kevin, and, yeah. Like linked up together. Yeah, in Kevin, the MCU. Kevin Feige stuff or whatever. I got you. Okay. But I guess we have uh the Mandalorian carrying Disney Plus right now. Uh, amazing episode yesterday. I'm not going to spoil it for Tony Stark Jr. because I know he didn't watch it. <laughs> but <laughs> it gave a, a big hint that we were all waiting for, which was cool. It was uh, expected, and uh, I guess we can talk about. Uh, Miguel's point about how, well, oh, what's his name again? Pascal. Yeah, uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal apparently wants to take his helmet off more. Yeah, he's this year even. I was reading the article, uh, watching the video last night. He's in constant, uh, especially for season two, I think, constant going back and forth with Disney and um, John Favreau. 
all right, uh, about wanting to take his helmet off, I guess, and, and show his face more. And I can see his point because, oh, you know, if you don't know his voice, you don't really know who it is, honestly, stuff like that. So I definitely see his point. But, right. you know, he knew he was getting into it at the same time. So it's a little bit of both ways. Yeah. Not to be I rude, got- but I don't really want to see his face. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, you remember he was in Game of Thrones, right? Which who was he in Game of Thrones? He was the, the one got, who got his scroll s- skull crushed by the mountain. I don't remember that part. Oh, 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 oh Oberyn Martell, the Viper. He's from Dorne or oh, whatever. What's the, yeah. Season he's, four, episode nine is where he got killed. Then. Trust me, I'm the Game of Thrones. It's yeah, like he was. Um, he was fighting for Tyrion, right? He fought the mountain. The okay. Viper, yeah. the but the I mean, Viper he fought the mountain. Yeah, he, he said he would, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, are you gonna take back that harsh comment uh, now? I mean, I didn't <laughs> like, like what he looked like. The thing is, right? I had expectation of what he was gonna look like when he took the Mandalorian mask off, and it did not meet my expectation. But okay, but he was bleeding when he did it. Uh, it didn't meet my expe- expectations by like a milestone. Really? I'll- I was wait. I was waiting for. Um, I thought he was gonna be like attractive or something. <laughs> I don't know. Girls, girls, girls. Like, oh, I'm man. there for Baby Yoda for the kid. Clearly. Like, they could have made, I think that they should have made him more attractive for the show. What? Just Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to just to her point before I go into the mat, taking off the mask, um, I thought it was going to be somebody like, uh, um, like Clint Eastwood, uh, I keep calling him Clint Eastwood, but uh, his son, like he was Scott. gonna look something like that. Um, what's his name? Scott Scott Eastwood. Yeah, Scott Eastwood. And then, um, um, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, you know, the character he does a great job with his voice and everything. But so to his point, one of the biggest thing I know this is a show, but now these shows are being on par with movies, right? But think about it this way: when we had something as popular as X Men, right? Mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman barely ever had the mask on, right? He didn't want to wear a mask. So it's like, uh, to be fair, all these comic book movies that come out, they really ever wear it. You see Iron Man with his face more than you see him with the mask on. You see Hugh Jackman's face more than you see the Wolverine mask on. You see everybody's face more than you see the mask. But uh, on the other side, so I get his point because I feel like if they're showing their face, but I feel like mm-hmm. the show to me is really cool with you not seeing his face and it goes with the lore. So to and it go, the number one thing is the lore cuz fans, the true fans are like I know you want your face to be shown but that doesn't work. Now, um it even just for a show, let's say I was a non-fan, and I didn't know about the lore, it's a cool a- feeling to it of him just like no, like you like remember when the robot wanted to take his mask off, he's like no, no living thing has seen my ma- face and he was like I'm not living. He was like all right, cool. So I feel like just that alone just made sense. Like that scene was perfect for his mask coming off. But you just have your mask off in a random scene because you're taking a shower. You take a thing. No, no, no. And he didn't even take it off for the chick. So I was like, all right, I, I respect right. that. So again, Mike, yeah. to your point, I absolutely understand because we talk about this all the time with the NFL players. They constantly have their helmets on. They want some shine like the NBA players or like soccer and football players internationally right. who don't have you know, helmets and everyone sees their face. They're even able to stylize their hair, things like that. I understand all that. However, for a TV show that we would want, I would say collectively to be more long-term, let's say more than five seasons, I think it really helps for the character development. Well, also, spoiler alert, Tony, close your ears. No, you can say without spoilers. You can allude to something without actually saying it. (laughs) Yeah, you kind of can, but... I could, but do I want to? Yes. So, okay. right, right. Sure. Tony, sure. I just give you my? I would give you my password for these shows. Listen, I just, you know what? My daughter lives here, and she. I just today when she comes home or when I see her, or whenever I'm just gonna say, "Hey, listen, I need your password to put on my PlayStation so I can have it." <laughs> you know. So, I almost feel bad because I didn't tell her that because she watched it with me, and yeah. I didn't tell her yet in those two episodes without her or three episodes back. <laughs> You might, need to watch those, yeah. you might need to watch those again for you yep. ask for the password. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the last episode alludes to what Mike's discussing, and they're probably going to come to some agreement with him as far as that, um, because they dropped the bomb today. Where's the bomb? 
Oh, we, wait. We dropped the bomb today. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I was unexpected. But it, now that I have context, it's not unexpected. So I think that they're going to let her mom get some shine. Right. I, I definitely think it's coming. I just think it has to go with the plot. And I think that it adds that intensity and, you know, anticipation as Tony was alluding to. So if you think about it this way, if he only takes his mask off like once a season, it kind of it, it, like in those moments, it builds up the tension to when the mask actually comes off like, whoa, his mask is coming off for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah, a I, great scene when his mask came off. Like, that was the perfect moment. And even the cliche of the words, no living thing has seen my face. I'm not alive. Like, like I'm not living. That was like writing, writing, writing. Yeah, I don't want to spoil either for you. Talk you you got to watch this last episode so you can really, really dive into it at some point. But I got to watch um, the last two episodes. <laughs> you got to watch the last two episodes. Maybe we could do like a real uh, spoiler discussion on Big Mike and Little Ant in our channel or something yeah. like that. But uh, you can watch it. What you eating, Mr. Urban World? What you eating? What's on the menu? Because I'm greedy. I want to know. But, Listen, but I'm it. sorry, man. I like to just shoot you an email. It's not my fault you're doing stuff when stuff is going on. So, But um, to, the, to the last episode, it goes back to a previous mm-hmm. discussion we had in our chat um, about, like, characters uh, from, like, the, um, the the Clone what is it? The Clone Wars show, stuff like that, mm-hmm. or whatever. And uh, I would... Yeah, I, what Nate was talking about, I really do got to watch, man, because it was like, I know who the hell the people were, stuff like that. So, yeah. I got to go watch, watch those last four episodes at least, or whatever. So. I'm waiting for a Stormtrooper show. I want right. to see that. That would be a comedy for one. Yeah, duh. Yeah. I, I love laughing. I'm all for it. That's the kid, because he's funny. I'm actually it's- getting a little. A little Yoda, baby Yoda, like fatigue right now. Fatigue. Thank you, Megan. No way. He's funny. Yeah. I, you know what? I haven't got there yet, but maybe I take yeah. so long be, be in between watching it. The bad you know? Yeah. That's probably what it is. Yeah. I'm ready for like, I don't know. I wish you could like put him to the side. Like, I'll be back in a couple weeks. I <laughs> want to like, get the mission. Powers. Why, why is he not using his powers? It has to be in like dire situations. Well, he did. Right. The last episode, he made. <laughs> He doesn't have control of him either yet. He doesn't right. even, you know. Right. Again, he's a, even though he's 50, he's a baby. But in the last episode, he that was pretty dire constraint. But what could he have done in that situation? He couldn't even see what was happening. Right? He knew what was happening. He didn't know for sure. Yeah, the Mandalorian shows lit. But he need, I need to see his powers. Yeah. I need to see his powers. I mean, well, again, it, guys, it's character development. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Doing the eating a, stuff. It's Looking a marathon, cute. not a sprint. Like we gotta have some patience here, right? Still yeah, like, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> He's so bad. He needs a spanking. You bad little boy or girl, whatever it is. Mm. You won't even know that, really, honestly. We don't even know what, what, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. I, <laughs> I mean, uh, the Mandalorian refers to him as you know. Him, I believe. So I thought he just said it. He just said, I don't even know if he said it. He does both. Barely, I have to look at the song. Yeah. He was eating the last. Uh, 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 No. (laughs) (laughs) No. Yo, Tony, you got one week. You got to catch up, man. Uh, I will. Try to hold it in my tongue. I will. Just let it all out. I promise. All right, cool, cool. All right, so as we uh, (laughs) transition from the, you know, streaming news, we actually have some news from Netflix that they're apparently thinking thinking about making a TV channel, like a linear channel with actual episodes, which is interesting. Hold on a sec. One of the biggest names in streaming, of course, for a long time is and has been and will probably continue to be Netflix. Netflix really changed the game. I mean, it was a a la carte on demand service. It wasn't like a regular TV station that had, hey, at eight o'clock, this starts at nine o'clock, this starts at 10 o'clock, this starts. And it's not like, like you even had to wait Monday. You can watch one episode. The next Monday, you can watch another episode. They just came out, order it on demand, watch it whenever you want, and they drop all their seasons at once. Well, they've been changing a little bit. They've been changing a little bit, and and we know they're going to start experimenting even more moving forward 
with maybe releasing weekly releases of some shows. I personally think that is the smart thing to do, even though I'm personally a binger. But it looks like they might even be making some changes in becoming more and more like a traditional TV network a little bit. I found this really interesting. According to a story on The Verge, Netflix, I don't know if you guys heard about this. Netflix is now testing in France a linear television style channel filled with Netflix content. Basically, it'll be a channel that you have that Something starts at 8, then something else starts at 10, then something else starts at 9.30, and then something else starts at whatever o'clock it is, and it's going to run linearly. Now, this is what they're being described. This is what's written over at The Verge. Netflix is testing a programmed linear content channel in France, Variety reported. The, the channel called Netflix Direct will be available to Netflix streaming subscribers and will provide content from its existing streaming library in a linear format like a traditional television station, much like cable and broadcast TV stations do. Maybe you're not in the mood to decide, or you're new to finding your way around, or you just want to be surprised by something new and different, Netflix said, said in a statement announcing the new service. It chose France for the launch of Netflix Direct, Direct because traditional TV is hugely popular there, and people just want to lean back and experience where they don't have to choose shows, the company said. So... All right, guys. Do you guys feel that way at all? Is it is it uh fatigue in terms of the the amount of options and then the fact that you can just binge and binge and binge as opposed to as we all discuss, you know, the short show format of the Mandalorian or Game of Thrones, which is weekly, perhaps that can add to the longevity of the shows like each program that they create. Yeah, I agree. I I prefer the weekly thing, but I think what's gonna be not good for them is if they have both. So if they give you an option, people are going to be like, I don't want to wait and just, because let's be clear. We, like Campia said, he likes binging, right? We like binging. Let's, you know, we like it. Like if you tell me um, my favorite show was on and it's coming out today, but like, or for instance, right? Uh, what they did with the boys, the first, they put the first three episodes out first. I sat there and watched them back to back, but I was mad about it and wish they did it little by little. But if you give me the option, I'm gonna do it. You just know it. Like, who's gonna have the option to watch straight uh, back to back and not? Like, you just, you know, it'd be hard to do that. So if, I think the hard thing is if they do give us an option, they say, hey, you can go to YouTube, regular YouTube, watch the stuff right away, or you go to the YouTube direct, I almost think it might be counterproductive, you know? But it sounds cool. I, that sounds like good format. Like you said, longevity of shows will last longer. You'll feel like you have more content. Um, I think that would be a good way to go. I'm just curious on if we did a percentage of overall, how many people would be upset by it? Like we think it's okay, but I wonder how many people would be like, no, that would bother them. So I think I understood that differently. Yeah. Right? I'm just that's saying that's that it's just going to be a channel that has uh, pre pre-programmed programming. Right, which probably means it'll be its best shows. Yes, right. but my, my thought, I didn't think it was going to be like something new. I thought they were just going to have like a sample of all the shows that they already no, have. That, that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if you you do that, you take all your content that's always been here, right, that you can watch whenever, and then mm -hmm. you put it over here and you can only watch it this day, at this time, this day. But if you keep this, right, so now if you got two, the people who are watching this are just going to say, all right, well, I don't want to wait for next week when we if we still have it here where we put it out where the whole season was put out at one time. They're going to watch something over here and just say, all right, well, I'm just going to go back to here and watch all right. it all. And then yeah. plus they will stop watching over here because they already seen it. So I get yeah. what you're saying, but I think it's different. I understood it as different than what you're describing. So I understood it as their channel, their linear channel will just have samples of what's already on demand so they might have one show of the office one episode of sister sister that's and then if you like that's, it then you could just go and watch the oh that, i see what you're saying that's even better because essentially it'd be like a trailer for, yeah, netflix. for netflix ah i like that's that what, yeah that's not what you were saying but hmm. i get what you were saying okay yeah i'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of confused on what you're saying but I mean, you, you, you can essentially do both yeah, what do you, you think big mike both but it was something different, I imagine. Yeah. So, um, so you both are saying the right things. Basically, they're saying they'll give you 
like 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 TV before any streaming, right? <laughs> First of all, we've been watching Sister Sister. Really? Moesha was a brat. She was a brat. The more I watch her as an adult, <laughs> the more I want to smack her. Wow. Because she was she was a spoiled brat and entitled. And T and Tamara were not. They weren't. They were they were bad as baby Yoda. Get they out were of bad, but they weren't spoiled and disrespectful. Mo I watched the episode of Moesha yesterday. She was disrespectful. I'd have slapped her if I was her I mom. Mean, that was the premise of the show. But nevertheless, <laughs> <laughs> she was a bad team. But bad. So, they're, so they're saying they'll give you TV like TV before streaming, right? We turn on TV and whatever's on, you right. can watch it. What Tony mm-hmm. is saying. If you give me that, but also give me the chance to watch whatever I want to, right. then why would I wait for you to give me what to watch or whatever like right. that? So right. I think that. Um, so I, I see why they would try. I think they're trying to in France when I read it to start with, because apparently France loves being told what to watch. Right? They don't want to have to sit and figure out what to watch, so they want yeah. to turn on TV. So they're trying to do it first, and I get it because here's the thing. I realized that if you go back to before, let's say Netflix and streaming and all that stuff, when you would turn on the TV and something was on, you would probably watch it, right? So, so there's so many probably movies and TV shows that you wouldn't have, um, let's say, looked for that you watched because it was on, right? Yeah. Like you was like, you know, it's, oh man, yeah, I've seen this in a long time. Let me watch it. But now yeah. you don't go look for it anymore. So I see. Yeah. Well, the, you know, you know what killed that was uh, a device called a DVR. That's what it is. DVR came out. So it's no, if you jump into a show and you're in the middle of the show, you're like, you know what? Let me just go on a guide and DVR it and I'll watch it later on. Like people will be like, oh, I know Monday night you're watching wrestling. I'm a huge wrestling fan. I rarely ever watch wrestling on time. Never. I watch it on DVR when I get around to it. So I think the DVR is what changed all of that, to be honest. Um, kind of, sort of. Only thing I would. Only thing I would say differently is that, like, okay, what I'm saying is that, let's say if it was whatever, 2007, right? And you go to turn on your TV and Back to the Future's on. And you're like, oh, man, I said it's all I'm going to watch it. You probably yeah. wouldn't DVR it because you didn't really care to watch it in the first place. Yes. But you're sitting there because it's on, is what I'm saying. Like, yes. um, you know, it's not, so, so now they're trying to take it back to that. And the only thing I will say is I get it because how many times do you look and say, what do I want to watch today? Mm-hmm. And you're sitting there for 25 minutes or a half hour still you going so through options. all these shows and so many right. options. So mm-hmm. I get it on that point. But to Tony's point, if you still give me the other chance, I'm going to still look for what I want to watch at that point. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. what they, one last thing, though. they could. I don't know what countries don't have Netflix, but they could start that off in a country that don't have Netflix. Don't they and give them that version. Uh, I think I think they do, but Netflix is similar to Amazon because they have all the data of their streaming, right? And who's mm-hmm. who's buying what, who's watching what, at what time, how often, mm-hmm. watch time, similar to YouTube, right? Because they they have all those all that analytics. data, all those analytics. Thank you. So they, as they said, they specifically chose France, as John said, as Mike said, right? Be- probably because they preferred the traditional linear TV model. Mm-hmm. That's their demographic. So that that's a specific demographic. And there might be other hubs, other countries that would prefer that format as well. And then you can test it there as well. Kind of like how you do with tech. This is beta testing. Or would yeah, you sure. do with uh, like McDonald's? I don't eat McDonald's anymore, but in certain places, like certain franchises have specific things on the menu and they try it out there first before yeah. And launching it everywhere. Yeah, I don't see because they've given us to Tony's point the other way. I don't see it ever working in the U.S. to where we would want to go back to linear yeah. for Netflix. Yeah, I mean, if the, yeah. the thing is, I would see it working in U.S. as an advertising channel. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you just turn on the channel. What's on here? Oh, this cool. This show looks cool. Let me go on the onto uh, Netflix and watch it. Because there's so many things. Like, I wish they had, like, do they even have trailers for shows on there? They do. See, yeah. I don't soon, the time to watch the trailers. Well, they play automatically. As soon as they you play go. All, yeah. As soon as you go on something, it just automatically starts playing the trailer. Yeah, and that's why, because I only go in there to watch specific things. So I'm not even browsing. It's just too many things on there. I guess the it way is. it's. Right. It's overwhelming. I, I think the way that it could work, and that's probably why they're testing it because it's overwhelming. But the way that it could work is, as you guys are saying, if you use, use it as a trailer channel to be like, oh, I want to watch more of this. How many TVs are smart TVs? They have the Netflix app already. Yeah. Continue watching this on the Netflix app. Yeah. Right. Like after the episode or something. 
Yeah, options are crazy, man. But like you're talking about options yeah. just on Netflix. Then you got all the other channels. You'll be 45 minutes. You know what? I'll just watch YouTube. Like that's what happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I watched the Amazon. Did you guys use your five dollar Amazon uh coupon that I sent y'all? I, no, I haven't used it yet. I will. Oh, I will. Yep. I sh- yeah, I should have told my wife. She bought a bunch what? of stuff yeah. from Amazon recently. You had to watch. You had to watch one of the shows. So I watched SpongeBob because it's only twenty minutes, and I got my five dollars. And you could use on anything on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Five dollar credit. Oh. Hmm. But I say that to say like. I would not have watched Spongebob. But I was like, oh, 20 minutes. And it was the first episode, so it's kind of cool to watch from the beginning. And they, like, remastered it, it looks like. looks different. And also, I think what could work with the Netflix channel is I know that their server bill is out of this world, which is why you have the, you know, are you still watching this? Because if you keep running it and no one's watching it, that's the, you're wasting money and you're heating up the servers with no, you know, ROI. So that that might you know you know help with that with that cost. I think they turned that feature off. It's still because mine. I I had it on for like the past three days. I've been watching it. Off. It's working for me. This works for you, Tom. It works for me. Oh yeah, listen. I'll come out my door because my daughter moved in. She sleeps on the couch. I walk out and yo, know, she's dead asleep, and the show's just playing over and over. And I get mad. I close. First of all, it's taking up my bandwidth if I'm gaming. So exactly. I close her laptop. <laughs> like yo, she's just killing. The internet and yeah. watching shows all night and she sleep. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't stop. Sometimes, but and even last night, like sister sister just kept going. It, it did stop at one point. Um I, the TV watching me while I'm asleep. I guess it just <laughs> uh, just depends. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's it a- depends on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe because when I was watching the office, I woke up, I was like, Oh snap, I'm like 10 oh, Office is so good, <laughs> man. It's so great. <laughs> So. Yeah, we're watching American Horror Stories right now, and it actually happened to us last night. We was we dozed off on one show, and when we went to watch it last night, we was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa where are we at?" So we had to back <laughs> up because I guess when we dozed off, it just jumped to the next. Well, it, it does that; it jumps to the next uh, episode. So. Right, and then uh, as we transition to the next topic, which is all the production being halted, such as Witcher season two, which is going to have Jason Momoa. I think that's a wonderful. Wow. Oh. Thing. Really? Yeah. So you got to watch season one. I know. I was, you know, I was tempted to watch. Maybe I'll watch it this weekend. Because we, I finished, oh my goodness, have you guys seen Watchmen? Mm. Oh, HBO? No, I haven't seen that. I haven't no. seen Watchmen? Are y'all ridiculous? Is that the one with, um, was, was, with Regina King, I think? Yes. That show, that show, that show had me hooked. It's confusing, but it's one of those shows that it's like <laughs> where you're confused. And then all of a sudden at the end, the TV show is so worth it. Regina King, she was lit. Like y'all have to watch it. It's really, really, really good. You know what? We said the same thing about The Witcher. So there I'm, we go. I'll watch The Witcher because I'm done. I'm finished. It was only nine episodes and they're only an hour long. So I think it's on HBO. Yeah, it's on HBO. Yeah, it's on HBO. Yeah. It's yeah, to really- Mr. Uh, Urban Rose's point, I seen the movie yeah. and uh, it, I had me interested to watch the show because the movie has really interesting characters. So I, was, I could imagine the show. I didn't see the movie. So I actually have to watch the movie now. But the show, what? Because yeah, there's a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on. And you're like, what the yeah. hell? Like, why is this happening? And then it, like, the way that they tell the story and it unfolds, you're just like, oh, snap. I did not see that coming at all. It's really good. It's really, really good. And then I, I looked up. I think they're coming out with a season two, possibly. Hmm. I hope so. Probably. Tina King, she killed that shit. I was like, what? I, I think she won an Emmy for it, actually. She sure. deserved it because she did a she did a hell of a job. Yeah, but uh, to the Witcher, yeah, man, Aquaman and Superman in the same show. So I think that's pretty. That's pretty. Cool. You know, <laughs> that's great. I think, Aquaman. Yeah, this will be the season where I think uh, he'll be training her. So I think it'll be. It's, man, I'm I'm excited about the Witcher, man. I thought that was so good, and I think they'll play it more regular this time you know me and tony don't talk about how to play the game before i yeah. think it'll be more like straight through so i think it'll um it's gonna be a great season man I, but it's halted obviously but you know whatever oh yeah they definitely ruined it they wanted to make it more uh family oriented oh the punisher. Nah. How you make the punisher family oriented that doesn't even make sense His <laughs> just... censorship nah it was uh the daredevil was better than punisher Mr. world sorry about that <laughs> so 
Oh, it definitely was better, but I'm saying to his point of how Disney tried to water it down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah, honestly, I didn't watch either one of them, but the only thing I heard about the Punisher was you got to see the episode with Daredevil, I mean, with uh, the Punisher on Daredevil, and he's beating people up in the jail cell. That's the only thing I ever heard people say. Oh, that was about good. The Is the yeah, that was a dead one. Is yeah. he the one with the, the skull on fire? No, no that's fire. Ghost Rider. That's Ghost Rider. Yeah. Oh, that's Ghost Rider. Oh, the Punisher is the one with the skull on the back. On his shirt. He got the skull on his shirt. Okay. And he just shoot guns. No superpowers. He's a... Uh, he, was, he always fighting superheroes. Like, <laughs> <veteran. I know. laughs> is he like John Wick? He's a veteran with PTSD. Oh. I'll just hear He's an he's a individual who has revenge on his brain. I'm not a big fan of... um. What's his name? Ben Affleck, to be honest. Different Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a different one. It's a TV. That was set. good though. She knew. Yeah, she knew he was Daredevil at one point. I'm not. I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, this guy who uh, played Daredevil, he was in a uh, Boardwalk Empire. I forget his name though, but he's um, he's real. Daredevil was great, and also Luke Cage was good too, or whatever. So Luke oh, Cage yeah. was good. It was definitely culturally relevant. I love speaking it. of real quick plug, speaking of Empire, my wife just told me they're planning on doing a Cookie Lion spinoff. Yo, oh, I wow. started watching that show so long ago. No, I seen every episode. I gotta. I did too, but I'm, surpri I'm surprised they're giving her a spinoff at this point. Whatnot. That's interesting, man. She is the biggest character on the show, so. I know, Good but because the, the, the ratings went down like by the last season. I, I watched every episode, don't get me wrong, but I'm surprised they done with that. But maybe I think the show 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 by herself be able to carry it. So also. is yeah. Jesse Smollett still on here? When they fired no. him? No, they got rid of him. <laughs> they did you know what's cool though? They did make references to him. I give them that credit. They at least put his name in it several times in the last season. He's a good actor. I mean, duh. Yeah, yeah I, honestly, over. let's regardless of what he did, right? Uh, I think we talk about this a lot. Like you do something in real life and they punish you, right? So, but um, the show wasn't the same. I guess that you know the you, the ratings would go down. Like he was such a prominent star or uh, actor on the show, and like uh, it was a difference. Once he was out of it, it was like man, it's so you knew something was missing, you know. I mean, and he was acting in real life too. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Perhaps we should give love to the other sibling who's on Lovecraft yes, Country. Yes, I love her. Oh, who else is on? Who's on Lovecraft Country from Empire? Journey. Just no, not on that show. Her, his real life sibling, Journey. Journey. Oh. She's an amazing actress. Right. She's probably one of my favorite actresses. That's cool. She is good, Josh. She is good. I'm not saying she. I'm not saying she's bad, but I'm just like there's so many other. <laughs> on that list. That, that's all I'm saying. No, she's just it's she's believable. One of which who was in Black Panther. Jesse Smollett should be. I mean, Journey Smollett should be in the next Black Panther. I think we should have a petition for her. She got to get her uh, stock up. So hopefully, Lovecraft will do that. But she got she's on TV clout. She need to be on film status clout. That's she was in Eve's Bayou when she was a kid. Y'all remember that? Yeah, kid stars need to transition. You know that. Yeah. Well, she transitioning, and hopefully, the guy, the what's his name, the main character, Tick. Tick Atticus. Isn't yeah. he supposed to be? You said a bad guy in the movie. He's supposed to be uh, Kang the Conqueror in the MCU, which should be interesting. Oh, right, movie. right, right. And uh, and, and what, what movie? And oh, Ant Man, Ant Man three, actually. Mm -hmm. I could see her cool. transitioning because she was in that too. Hopefully, that'll be cool. She, she did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. But she ain't on Angela Bassett level. Stop playing. Angela Stop Bassett playing. is OG. Triple OG. Put Triple some respect OG. on her name. <laughs> and then for our last segment, guys, I, I have to talk about it. The uh, pandemonium about the next gen gaming. Do we know anyone who uh, actually acquired yeah. uh, Xbox My or PS5? Yeah, you know, um, when I do the all-purpose champion crew, so I play with just Joe and I play with Jose. Jose got both. What? Yeah, he got both. Yeah, he wasn't playing. It. He when they the night they said because uh, it was a surprise. Sony did a uh, an event and they said and following tonight the PlayStation pre order would be live. It, he sat on listen. He sat on BestBuy.com for two and a half hours <laughs> pressing the button. It kept going in a circle. In a circle, and he just pressed it for two and a half hours till it finally went through because it knew that so many people was trying to get it. So it showed in his cart, 
but it kept glitching, like loading, loading. And for two and a half hours, he did not quit. And yeah, and he got the Xbox uh, at one, the Xbox as well. Wow. I secure when I'll be selling it. It's going for like two grand online right now. It is. Yeah. You know how many you could buy? <laughs> Two grand. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Two stacks? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It's high commodity. People want it really bad. I know. Yeah. Especially ahead of this holiday season on the back of a pandemic. It would Listen. probably save... It would save a lot of people's year to acquire that. So I understand why a lot of people wanted that. I get that. Especially if you're going to be in quarantine. Why not be in quarantine with that? those amazing devices? But for me... Yeah. It was, again, I love PlayStation and I have respect for Xbox, but I always wait to the second batch for any new next gen games. Like I, I'm going to get the second batch after y'all work out the kinks. So around my birthday, around February time, I'll, I'll probably. Yeah, know, you're one. There, yeah. So I'm like, so yeah, like yeah, dropping I, you a hit, Chloe, that he put it once for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I always get the systems day one um, and I only ever had one issue. When I got my PlayStation 4, I was one of the unfortunate individuals. I got it the day one, and the uh, HDMI port in the back wasn't connected. So all I got was a blue screen. Wow. So I had to send it back to Sony. So it took me, I bought it, got it day one, and had to wait two weeks to get it back. So, but um, but that only ever happened to me once. So, I mean, I bought, you name a system. If I bought it, I got it day one. But um, system shutting down already. <laughs> But, uh, but this year, um, there's a couple rumors. Like there's a rumor that the Xbox One X was um smoking. Um, there's a there's a couple um a couple you know uh, PlayStation apparently stopped working, but we don't know how true some of the stuff is. But um, true. I'm sure some of that. I'm sure there's some issue somewhere. I know one uh person um his his Xbox. He said, "Oh, my Xbox stopped working." Well, what it was was he actually broke his NDA because he got the Xbox early. And so oh. Microsoft just bricked his system. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so now he gotta buy another one. So hey, what yeah. happened? he broke his so NDA. He got he got it early mm-hmm. and he wasn't supposed to like he he was supposed to be able to talk about it but not show it. So he uh, showed it anyway. So now he made a video talking about like, oh, the system broke. But then uh another guy he does a show called Review Tech, he made the video and said, No, uh what happened was Microsoft and because my, Microsoft came out and said there's nothing wrong with his unit because he's trying to tell people, oh, I got a glitch unit. It's like, no, they bricked it. They pressed the button to say, no, your system can't work. So when people think they could, you know, do all these hacks and stuff, if Microsoft or Sony or whatever find out, they could easily hit a button and, and cut your system off and make it not work. People think like, oh, it's in my house. I got control of it. You think that. But this thing is still tied to, you know, their online, you know. Are you getting it all? Like at all? Are you getting either one of these systems at all, or, or no? It's crazy, man. But right now, no. I'm um waiting. So here's my thing. As I got a little older, I you know being younger, I just had to have it, right? As I got a little older, I got a little more mature in my spending habits, and I feel like there isn't one game out right now, right, that I would buy. So the question would be, okay, well, if I bought either system, what what game would I get? Now, many would say Spider-Man. Josh got Spider-Man shirt on. I didn't even play the last one. I did a world premiere review because I bought it for my son for his birthday, but I never beat it or never. I played it for about an hour. That was it. Uh, Godfall looks cool. It's a PlayStation game, but I'm not so sold. So for me, if I spend $500, what am I going to play? To be fair, right? Um, and then to be honest, in the background, this is going to be really cool. I'm going to make a video today, but guys, you see my, I got a new, it took about an hour working on my new um, thumbnail. And if you could barely see it, but it says Super Saturday, there's something really cool. I just wanted to bring it up in gaming. Um, Stadia, uh, Google Stadia, if you didn't know, it's a cloud-based service. And the tie-in Amazon, the, you know, the most powerful company in the world, their new uh, cloud-based service came out too. So Amazon is now in video games. So, um, But Stadia, one-year anniversary is going to be the 19th, which is next week, Thursday. And they're doing a thing on the 21st called Stadia Super Saturday. It's going to be all the top stadia content creators and others and they're going to do uh for 36 hours they're going to start 6 a.m on saturday and go all the way to whatever that end up being on sunday and it's going to be each person has an hour and then what you what the, the thought is is going to be amazing so let's say you take the biggest guy his name is uh cloudy games right you or sunny right and uh or stadia cast these are like the top guys all their followers are going to watch but here's the cool thing 
when their stream ends, they're going to have a logo for the next person. They're going to say, hey, go follow that person next. So it's going to be a relay race. Like you're going to hand off your followers and all these people is going to grow and grow and grow. So small channels could get huge based off of them passing along. And the cool thing is your boy is actually a part of it. The only bad thing is I'm going at 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, uh, Saturday night or Sunday morning. But the guy before me is called Stadia Tarks, and he's a pretty big. So, like, um, being a part of Stadia Source, um, uh, which is a you know uh, the the biggest news outlet for Stadia online. But I'm a streamer for their platform where I'm streaming games for them on their YouTube channel, helping their YouTube channel grow. Well, I've like got to know like like Stadia Cast, like the dude when he see me come on line, he say, "Hey, what's up, Anthony?" So like the big guys like know me by name. I've been trying to get them like, hey, let's do something together. It'd be cool. A small channel like me. So the guy, Bill from StadiaCast said, dude, I'll let you interview me on. Um, so let's talk. I'm like, that'd be cool. But anyway, uh, what's going to be cool is all these fans of cloud gaming. This is going to be a really huge thing for cloud gaming. This this 36 hour event. Not I mean, every hour for 36 hours is going to be a different person streaming there, you know, whether they want to stream whatever game. So. I had to put the thing that says Super Saturday. I got to put my logo up and I have to um, I have to make a um, like, you know, how you made your thing uh, upcoming. I got to make my upcoming thing for a week ahead of time so they could they could uh, use it. So you'll see a bunch of people now coming up with that. So I think that's huge. And that also to answer Mike's question, because I'm so into cloud gaming, um, it's making me hold off a little bit on the new systems. Like yesterday, my friend who has it has a PlayStation 5. He wanted we did a we did a special Friday the 13th stream. So we played Friday the 13th game. I dressed up as Jason. It was cool. We had a lot of people jumped on. Somebody wrote me this morning. It was like, hey, it was a really good stream. I subscribed. It's cool. So um he wanted to play Friday the 13th on his PlayStation 5, which is cool. You could play 94% of the PlayStation games on your PlayStation 5. You could download them, right? So we went to play. Uh he was like, Oh, you guys gotta give me some time. I was like, for what? He was like, I'm still gotta download it. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, how much time you guys? Like 20 minutes. And not to knock, because obviously the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X is more powerful than cloud, whatever cloud gaming is right now. But it is really cool to know that if I went to play a game right now and I never played it, there's no download. Like I was like, you know, like I could press play and then snap my fingers because it's coming from the cloud. Um and Mr. Urban World, he's a fan of cloud gaming too, but I mean, so right now it makes me say I'm going to hold off on new systems, mainly because I want to see a game that I want to play. And also I love the, you know, the cloud based stuff, not downloading and stuff like that is kind of cool. But the new systems got these SSDs where they're going to load things faster. So that's a plus for that. But anyway, True. And to, uh, thank you for that, Tony. That was an amazing soliloquy. I, <laughs> I'm very impressed that you were able to breathe that entire time. That was very impressive. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Like See, I told you I love movies, but my passion is game. Gaming is my top right. of the top. All right, you know? all right, all right. Okay. To uh, answer Miguel's question as we uh, sign off here, yes, I will be getting a PS5 eventually, and I do. I've, I am going to play the Miles Morales Spider Man. I'm gonna get back into 2K. I told myself I'm gonna get back into 2K. Start streaming that. Obviously, I'm gonna stream FIFA as well. Yeah. Probably will get into Madden as well, and the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So. Things, things like that, that will be coming to the uh, Slayer Gaming channel. Nice. There we go. All right. Well, all right, guys. Enjoy your weekend. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Urban World and E Money in the comments. We appreciate y'all once again. And enjoy your weekend, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Peace. Later. Oh. Ah!